Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Breaking Bread. My name is uh, Pastor Lloyd Cocker with uh, Gospeler Ministries. Amen. And I just want to thank you this evening for joining, joining me here as we break bread together. Um, I am the local pastor of Gospeler Ministries located at 2078 North Liberty Street, Jacksonville, Florida. And um, I just want to welcome you tonight. We're going to break bread together. You know, um, in the past previous shows, we've talked about God's word being food. You know, it says man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means we cannot have life by just eating physical food, but we have life by feeding and living in God's word. Amen. Whew, so I'm so excited today. I'm so excited this evening or, or afternoon, wherever you are. I just want to thank God that he has brought us here today. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the breath of life. Thank you for your words of life. Thank you for every single thing. And before we even go uh, 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 further, I just want to recap uh, on what we have been talking about in previous shows, previous Breaking Bread. You know, we've talked about the word being food. We've talked about the word being also that drink, that refreshing drink. You know, in the book of Proverbs, it says, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Whoo, I tell you what, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so it's good news from a far country. So the good news of Jesus Christ is like, it, it, it is cold waters to a thirsty soul. It is refreshment. It is living waters. You know, we cannot go, we could only go so long without water. So the word of God is telling us that we shouldn't go long at all without the living waters, without the refreshment for our souls. Amen. So we've talked about the word of God being that bread. We've talked about the word of God being water. We've talked about the word of God also being wealth, valuables, riches. You know, it says uh, 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 more than silver and gold. God, you know, if you look at the book of Job, Job 20, uh, 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 chapter 28, it talks about how wisdom is far more valuable than rubies, than the gold of, 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 of Ophir, the gold, uh, uh, the diamonds, the, 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 I mean, everything that we can think of, it tells us that God's word is more valuable. God's wisdom is more valuable. Amen. So we should, we should collect and, 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 and make ourselves rich with God's word. Amen. And I mean, there's so many things. I mean, there's even uh, 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 a week, several weeks in the past, we talk about God's word being medicine, medicine for our 
bones, medicine for our own health. Amen. So we got to realize that God's word is even that medicine. It says pleasant words is as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the body. And what are those pleasant words? And, 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 and what is that honeycomb? When, when you look at it, we broke it down that, you know, the honeycomb is the sweetest part of the honey. Amen. And that's what it's comparing God's word to. It's sweet. It's sweet for the soul. And also, it says it is medicine. Well, if you, if you just take the medicinal purposes and the medicinal benefits of honey, you know, honey is one of the eternal foods. It says that honey does not rot. You know, they've even discovered graves of uh, that, uh, 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 thousands of years old and they, that, uh, bodies that were buried with a jar of honey and the honey is still fresh. So that honey is an eternal food. It, does, you know, it doesn't rot, and it's, comparing, it's telling us that's what God's word is compared to. And you know, honey also is used for so many medicinal purposes. It heals our wounds. It, 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 it cuts and, and bites, and, and also it's good for, for colds and so many different, different things. So just bringing, just re refreshing your memory on some of the things that God's word is compared to. Amen. But today, tonight, I want to let you guys know that God's word is not just the food and the medicine and the drink and the wine and all these things that brings joy to our, uh, to our heart. But God's word is also a refuge. It is a refuge. And what is a refuge, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you what. It says a refuge is, def is defined as shelter or protection from danger or distress. And I'm going to repeat that. Refuge is shelter or protection from danger or distress. Amen. Taking refuge is like finding a safe place during a storm or getting comfort in a time of trouble. And this is God's word. Amen. So God's word is also a refuge. It's also a refuge. And when you're looking at uh, um, that word refuge, there are several pictures that we can uh, um, bring to mind. A place of protection. It could be a fortress. And I'm going to explain what that is. You, you, you've guys seen the movies where you see the castle and surrounded by water and there's only one way in, there's one, one bridge that you can get into the fortress. Well, God's word, Jesus Christ is that bridge, amen? That is that bridge because when we are in Christ, we are safe, we are safe. But God's word is that fortress. God's word is also a shade, amen, a shade of protection protecting us against the heat, the, the, the storms. God's word is also a rock. So now when we're looking at that word refuge, that place of protection, these are all pictures that describe in God as a refuge. So we've got the fortress, we've got the rock, we've got the shade, we've got the sheltering wings, amen. We've got a shield, God is a shield. He is that place of protection. Amen. And he's also a tower. Whoo, he is a tower. A tower. Once you're, once you're on that tower, the enemy cannot, cannot get in touch with you, cannot get a hold of you. So I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and just break down all of these because, you know, we, when we're thinking of the word of God, you know, I love food. And I love the bread and the bread of life. You know, Jesus said he is the bread of life, you know, and, 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 and you know, the blood is in his word. And also the, the, the refreshment, the drink, the word being the drink. But this time I want us to focus on God's word being that place for refuge, especially in these times. We got the coronavirus. We've got COVID. We have all these things. We have everybody offering their uh, 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 form of 
refuge and, and saying, well, if you get this medicine, if you take this vaccine, but I want to encourage you today that our only and true refuge for believers is in God. Amen. Amen. And he is our fortress. When you look at Psalm 46, verse 7, he says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Woo! The Lord of hosts. When it's talking about the Lord of hosts, it's talking about the heavenly armies. The armies of the Lord. The heavenly armies is with us. Amen? And, 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 and we have to really sit down and meditate on that. You know Deuteronomy verse 33? Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27? It says, the eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he thrust out the enemy before you and said, destroy. So God is our dwelling place. He's our refuge. When we, are, when we run to him, we are safe. We are safe. And there's nothing. There is nothing. We have to realize that there is nothing that can penetrate and, and, and can, can snatch us out of his hand. You know, there's a scripture in the book of John. He said, he said no one can snatch them out of my hands. He said, when uh, 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 my father who gave me, who gave them to me, no one is stronger than, 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 than God. And no one can snatch us out of Jesus' hands. Amen. So that's confidence right there. And our confidence is always in the Lord. So I want to encourage you today, today to remember. You know, I have to bring you back to remembrance with these words. This is a word of, uh, uh, of just bringing you back to remembrance just in case you become overpowered by the floods of the world, the words of, of the world. And I want to encourage you and let you know that, hey, our greatest place is in God. He is our refuge. You know, it says that, it says the Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. That is Psalms 28 verse 8. And I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures tonight just to, just to stir you up and bring you back to remembrance. Amen. That our strength, our protection is in the Lord. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. You know, uh, um, Psalm 46 verse 1 talks about how God is our strength. He said he is our fortress, our present help today, today for when we are in trouble. Amen. So he is our present help. He's not just the God who saved Jacob, who saved Abraham or in the past, but he is saving right now. He is our present help right now. So we can trust in him. Amen. You know, we've talked about, uh, I've given you a, a few scriptures describing God as that fortress. Amen. And I'm going to give you one more. It says, within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. That is Psalm 48, verse 3. It says, within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. And I want you to go back and really meditate what fortress is. Look up the pictures, amen? Look up, pull it up on Google. Google fortress so you can see, get a picture of what God is to believers, amen? You know, it says also that God is a rock, a rock. And I'm going to tell you, it says the, in, in Psalm, 2 Samuel 22, verse 2 and 3. That's 2 Samuel 22, verse 2 and 3. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. And my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. Whoo! This is David. And if you know any man that know, uh, 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 understood troubles and enemies and, and all kinds of uh, attacks, it was David. Yes. Amen? 
And he is telling us right here, he is putting his trust. He says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. Ooh, David could not take refuge on anything else. He knows. He knows. And this is who we have now in Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to take refuge in him. His blood. His sacrifice that he, he sacrificed uh, uh, himself on the cross for us. He is our refuge. He is higher than all principalities, powers, uh, uh, dominions, and, uh, and I mean everything in heaven, on earth, and even under the earth. Amen. So when we take refuge in him, guess what? We're above all things, even death itself. Amen. Whoo, I tell you what, I'm excited. I am uh, 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 excited to, tonight. Every time I, 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 I get into, in, 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 into this word, referring to God being the, our refuge, it just excites me. Amen. And, uh, you know, I have so many scriptures, and, I, and, and I'm going to try to give as much as I can before we run out of time this evening. But, you know, God also, as I mentioned, is our shade, is our shade. You know Psalm 91 verse 9? It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Whoo, I tell you, I'm going to say that again. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You know, and when you look at that, that's Psalm, that's Psalm 91 verse 1. You get the words 911. Whoo, whenever you need to call, on help and protection, you call 911. Amen. And this is Psalm 91, verse 1. And he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that word, Most High, is the Hebrew, you know, it actually has the name of God, which is Elion. Elion. And also, the word Almighty is Shaddai. Shaddai. And these are, you know, as, you're, as we're looking into the word, we are actually evoking, invoking God's name. Amen. And it, it, it is, a, it is a, a refreshment to know that when we dwell in that secret place, we're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you read that psalm, it's telling us the protection that we have when we, take, when we have God as our refuge. Amen. So he is that shade. You know, Psalm 121 verse 5 says, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord is your keeper. It is the shade. He is the shade upon your right hand. When you put your trust and your faith in the Lord, he will keep you and he will keep you under the shade. Amen. So that it doesn't matter what comes your way. The Lord will deliver you. Sickness, uh, uh, even your, around your enemies, Lord, he will deliver you. He will keep you protected. Who he will shade you like how the you know from the heat, from the heat of 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 life, from the heat of of just uh, 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 um, suffering. He will protect you. Amen. And you know the Lord also is our sheltering wings sheltering wings and you're saying well what does that mean well if you go to psalm 57 verse 1 it says be merciful unto me O god be merciful unto me for my soul trusteth in thee yea in the shadow of thy wings i will make my refuge until the calamities have overpassed who you know when we make god our uh, our refuge He's, he's like that sheltering wings. And this, whatever calamities that is out, it will, it, he keeps you from it. Amen. He keeps you protected. Amen. He keeps you protected. It says Deuteronomy 32 verse 10 and 11. It says he found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth about abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Now that's a mouthful, but I want you to take a look at that. Deuteronomy verse 32, Deuteronomy chapter 32, 
verse 10 and 11. It says, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth broad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Who picture that as that eagle does that for her young is how the Lord takes us under his sheltering wings. And there's a few more scriptures, but it says also God is our shield. And I'm trying to go through some of these before uh, 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 we're out of time here. But God is also our shield. And when you look at uh, Genesis 15 verse 1, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Who he said to Abraham, he said, I am your shield and your great reward. Exceedingly great reward. So I want you to think about God just not even, just only not being that shield, but he is our great reward. Who, when you have God as your refuge, you have a great reward exceedingly great and I want you to look at the Lord as that reward amen and 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 the one last thing I wanted to share is that God being our tower our tower and you can picture that tower you know high tower definitely when you're up there you can see the enemy but the enemy cannot touch you amen you can, who they have no reach. They have no reach, no power over you. And he says, the name of the Lord, Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth to it and is safe. Amen. Who, and you know, when, when we are in Christ, he declares us righteous. Who, I tell you, I am excited. You know, I tell you what, I have personal testimonies of just how God has rescued, delivered, saved, healed, healed me. And I know he will do the same thing for you when you put your trust in him, when you make him your refuge. Amen. I pray that the church say amen to that. But there was one more verse. It says, uh, uh, Psalm 61 verse 3. It says, for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemy. Psalm 61 verse 3. For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. So I tell you this, this, this evening as we are here in Jacksonville, Florida. God is good. God is your refuge. If he's not already, you need to make him your refuge. He is that fortress, that, that strong tower, that shade. He does not want us to be in fear. You know, the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, but of love, and of a sound mind, of a sound mind. Amen? So he does not give us that spirit of fear. He wants us to trust in him. He wants us to trust in him and believe in him and take his promises as he has given it to us and believe him that he is a man of his word, just as the scripture says. Amen. So this evening, before we close down, I just wanted to read a passage out of Psalm 90, verse 1 through 4 and 12. It says, Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born from age to age you are God you turn us back to the dust and say go back O child of the earth for a thousand years in your sight is like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And it says, even in the darkness, we will trust that our lives are still in your hands. Even in the darkness, we will trust that our lives is still in your hands. You know, before we close this um, time, 
of breaking bread. I just thank God so much. And I just want, I, I, I know I, I went through some of these a little fast, but I want you to, to just, 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 when you get a chance, meditate on some of those scriptures. Meditate on them. Meditate on Psalm 46. That is a very powerful psalm. It says that God is our refuge three times in one single psalm, one chapter, verse 1, verse 7, and verse 11. It keeps repeating that God is our refuge. And then it also says that the Lord of hosts, which is the heavenly armies, is our refuge. So meditate on that. Amen. Chew on it. Meditate on it. And before we close, I just want us to, to just close out with the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. And I just pray that once you've said that prayer, which the Lord taught us to pray, make sure you're not hiding any unforgiveness in your heart. Amen. I want you to forgive. If there's anyone that has offended you, forgive them and so that we can be forgiven. Amen. And before we leave tonight, I just want to say, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. I am so glad that you were able to join me tonight. And I pray that the Lord continue to watch over you and bless you and grant his favor over you. And as you make him your refuge, in Jesus' name, amen. Are you a pastor trying to survive the new wave of change? Church has changed from beautiful Gothic cathedrals and mega church auditoriums to studio-style virtual church. You can do church, but not with an expensive location and exorbitant overhead. Are you clueless about how to do it? Do you want to know how to put on the production? Let us at the Inspired Network help make your virtual services professional and viral online. Let us do it all for you. Tape it in our studio for affordable rates. We help you broadcast your message on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. Weeks on your own page. Let us help make your message. Virtual call us today. 1-866-804-6774 Are you a frustrated leader trying to figure out how to get your media ministry to the next level? Maybe you don't even know the equipment to buy. You want to do it, but you're struggling to do it right. You've got a group of people that are willing to learn, but no one to teach them. Let me offer you what is called the Media Camp. For one day and a half, Friday and Saturday morning, your team will come sit down with the top staff from the Inspired Network and will teach them production from streaming and editing to the Ministry of Media Production. They will go from the classroom to hands-on training. If you're ready for your media ministry to be the best in town, then go to www.mediatraining.us and sign up today. Or call us today at 904-604-8448. Remember, we have limited space for this type of hands-on, one-on-one personal training. You're watching the Inspired Network. And maybe you're watching us on social media. Immediately go to your Roku device, press Add Channel, and download us today. Hi Jacksonville, my name is Michelle Holmes with SVR Realty. I am your home buying and selling specialist in the Jacksonville area. I can help anyone, military included, buy a home, sell one quickly. If you have any questions on your home value, please reach out to me for a free home evaluation. Do you need help with your VA loan benefit? My assistance? Call me, Michelle Holmes.
you have a business or product? Are you looking to advertise? Maybe to get the word out to thousands of people on a daily? You should consider the Inspired Network. We have affordable packages that can assist you at getting the word out about your product or business. Call us today at 866-804-6774. Your financial support keeps the ministry alive. You can be a blessing by sewing via Cash App today at dollar sign Teach Jacks or you can text to give at 833-481-1524 and text the word GIVE. 